Welcome to part two of the lecture about percentiles. Remember that I was have been talking about the relative position when you stretch a group of scores out along a distribution. You're looking at the percent of scores at or below a particular number for the percentile. So the 60th percentile means that 60% of the scores are at or below that point. 80th percentile means 80% of the scores are at or below that point. Now we're going to look at percentile rank. We've been looking at finding a score of a particular percentile. In other words, what is the score that, that falls at the 50th percentile, the 25th percentile? Now we're actually going to look at the opposite. If we have a score, what is the percentile rank of that score? In other words, if we have a score of 27, what portion of the scores fall at or below it? Keep the two concepts as opposites. Note that when you're asked for a percentile, you're looking for a score at that percentile point. When you're asked for a percentile rank, you're looking for a score. So they're just opposites. Let me go back to my really simple example of the seven scores from the quiz I gave. This time, I want to know what percentile rank a score of five is. We know that two scores are below that score of five. See, I went to the previous score and it accounted for two of them. Between a score of 3 and a score of 5, we can assume that there would be 2.5 scores accounted for, a cumulative frequency of 2.5. So I simply did divide that 2.5 by the total number of scores that I have, which is 7, and I find out that 35.7% of the scores fall below a score of 5. That means that the percentile rank for a score of 5 is 35.7. This isn't as easy when I ask you for a percentile rank if a student had scored 12. Because look at the, the jump there. It becomes a little bit different. So, of course, we have a formula, which is 3.2 in your book. So we're going to figure out, using the formula, the percentile rank for a score of 5. First, we put in the cumulative frequency of the scores below the interval with our score of 5. So I go back to a score of 3, and at that point, two of the scores have been accounted for. X refers to the score we're investigating. Remember, it's the score five. I want to know what its percentile rank is. And we use the lower limit for the interval with the score of five. The lower limit for a score of five is 4.5. And the width of the interval, we, we didn't, I didn't group numbers into groups, so the width of the interval in this case is one. And the frequency of that score of five, there was only one in its frequency. And finally, I'm going to divide that all by the total number of scores we have, which is seven. And then we simply solve, remembering to use the right order of operations. And big surprise, we find, as we expected, that a score of 5 is at the percentile rank of 35.7. Once again, I would suggest that you go through the example in your book with different colors or drawing arrows or something to help you take apart each step in the example the author gives. Let me go back to the very beginning of my discussion about percentiles and percentile rank. We are using these constructs to rank intervals of scores. In other words, 
we're putting a score into a context that shows where it falls in that stretched out frequency distribution of all the scores. We are creating an ordinal scale with this ranking. An ordinal scale does not have equal units of measurement. Think of a foot race. The interval between the first and second place runners may not be the same as the interval between the second and third place runners. An ordinal scale just shows the order or rank. In the same way, a percentile of 40 is not the same interval away from a percentile of 20 as it is from a percentile of 60. It's going to be based on the frequency of the scores that fall at each of those percentile points. This means that we cannot use percentiles and percentile ranks in calculations or analyses that involve computations. They're on an ordinal scale. It also means that we can't compare the percentiles on different scales. In other words, a student scoring in the 75th percentile on a reading test cannot be compared to a student scoring in the 75th percentile on a math test. It would be like comparing the second place shooter in an archery contest with the second place runner in a cross country race. We can't compare those two percentile points. So now you're ready to do the practice exercises. I posted the details of the answers and you can download those so that you can see exactly where the answers that are in Appendix D came from and you can see which numbers to use. Also, remember to look at the section about the ogive and how to figure the percentile rank using that kind of a chart. That's very straightforward in your textbook, so I didn't go into detail in it in the lecture. The second thing I'd like to remind you about is that you need to figure out where you're going to use the SPSS software package that I talked about in the syllabus on campus, or you need to purchase it and get it installed because very quickly we're coming up on an assignment where you're going to be using SPSS and you need to have that all ready to go.